Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm finally doing probably my most requested video which is digital art tips and tricks. I keep getting DMs and comments requesting for this video, so today's the day. Keep in mind I'll be focusing on specifically digital cartoon slash anime styles. I have two separate videos, one on portraits and realism and one on just art tips in general already, so be sure to check those out. Please check those out. And then without further ado, let's get started. The most basic equipment you will need is a graphic tablet. There are more ways to draw, but I'll talk about that later. Please don't spend too much time stressing over what tablet brand model you should get. So to make things simpler for you, here are some main things that you should consider. Number one, screen or no screen. If you're starting, there is absolutely no need for a screen tablet. But I mean, if you have the budget and the money and, the, and if you want one, then go for it. Number two, size. I don't know if it's just me, but I'm completely fine with drawing a small graphic tablet because I only use one space anyways. Just find a size that is most comfortable for you. Number three, touch or no touch. Some graphic tablets have the option where you can basically treat it as a large trackpad. I never really used this feature and if you feel like you don't need to use this feature as well, just find one without this option because it'll be much cheaper. Number four, amount of buttons. Again, consider how many buttons you really need. A standard graphic tablet should have two buttons on the pen and maybe some on the tablet itself, but I never really use the buttons on the tablet itself. And number five, wireless or no wireless. So a good or decent graphic tablet should cost at most 80 US dollars. I've collaborated with XP Pen before, so maybe you guys can check out my review and see if that specific tablet is the one for you. I can't say the same for other graphic tablet brands, so please sponsor me. <laughs> Just kidding. Or, or not kidding, I don't know. As for other ways to draw, you can either draw on your phone using Ibis Paint, which can be a good alternative while you save up for your tablet, or on the other side of the spectrum, save up a lot of money so you can buy an iPad. I personally use an iPad just because I also use it for taking notes, watching YouTube, Netflix, etc. So it's really up to your personal preference. Anyways, once you get your graphic tablet, you can bind specific commands to your buttons. For example, the two buttons on my graphic tablet pen are Command Z, which is the best command ever, and right click, which is the eye drop tool for Fire Apaka, so it's way easier to pick colors. Obviously, you can bind whatever command that is best suit for you. I got a really good question a while back asking me how did I select the program that I use today, so I'll be answering that question right here and right now. When I first started, I would watch a lot of speed paints on YouTube. It was legit the only thing on my YouTube feed aside from Minecraft videos, but I was like 10. Please don't judge me. Anyways, what I would do is watch these speed paints of the artists I look up to, go to either their description or their YouTube comments, and then find out what program they're using, and then I'll download it myself, test it, and if I like it, then yay, and if I don't, then I'll try out another program. To make things easier for you, I use Procreate on my iPad. Before that, I used Fire Alpaca, which is free, and I really, really highly recommend it to beginners because it's so user-friendly. And I also tried Paint Will Sigh. It's amazing, but the program isn't free and it's not available for MacBooks. And I have a MacBook. Other programs that I heard are really good from my artist friends, but I don't use myself are Clip Studio Paint, Medibang, and Photoshop. So you can do more research on those pro programs if you're interested. Here is a quick crash course of the functions you should know on any art program and I really recommend just researching how the program works and what functions that that specific program has because it's really good knowing and that will help you a lot when you're drawing. So anywho, you have your brushes. Here are all the brushes I use. I made a favorites folder just to stay organized and to find brushes basically just stalk the artists that you like and ask them what they use because that's what I do. <laughs> Other functions, color drop tool to select the color you previously used, the fill bucket tool because you're lazy, the selection tool which is useful for coloring and shading, and then the lasso tool and transform which I use a lot, a lot. So keep that in mind that this function is always here for you. 
Other things to keep in mind, layers, they're pretty self-explanatory. The thing you draw on top will cover the layer on the bottom. You can change the opacity of each layer. And there are also different functions such as clipping layers, which allows you to draw on the shape that you created. The protect alpha slash alpha lock function, which basically is the same thing as clipping, but it's on the same layer as clipping, you do it on a different layer. And there are also layer modes. There are a million layer modes and I personally don't actually know what every single one of them do, do but I'll tell you guys the ones that I use. So add luminosity and color dodge. They I use for adding highlights because they're brighter and they just pop out more. And then multiply I sometimes use for shading. Yeah, those are the only two <laughs> layer modes that I really use. Don't feel obligated to use all of these layer modes because they're meant to help you and you're not you're helping them you know there are also more functions like liquify which help you fix minor details blur which can create more depth into your drawings and adjust hue saturation or brightness which i love doing because i get to play around with the color and yeah those are all the functions that you really know but please do more research yourself on the program I really highly recommend watching my art tips I wish I could tell my beginner self video because I basically covered how to improve drawing there. But in summary, have an artist inspiration board and always look at these artists when you draw and PRACTICE! <laughs> Sorry, was that too loud? The more you draw, the things will get easier and better. Don't worry, just keep drawing and you'll be fine. In the future, I'll also make an anatomy video, so subscribe and turn on your notifications whenever I do that. <laughs> Number four, line art. So once you have a graphic tablet, of course you have pen pressure, which is something really important because that allows you to have lines with different widths. and. This is also really important when you do line art as well because when you do line art, you don't want to have it only in a specific width. You want to have a variety of widths so it looks better. And it's also really important to know what a stabilizer is. So a stabilizer is basically a function on your program that allows your lines to have a smoother and stabilized finish. However, it means it'll be harder to control because it'll be more stabilized. It's really hard to explain unless you physically try it. So go and turn your stabilizer to like the maximum count and then try doing it without any stabilization and you'll see there's a huge difference. This is very significant because it allows your line art to have a clean and crisp finish. And another tip is just to make sure that your sketch is not too messy if you have a habit of making very messy sketches i recommend doing another cleaner version of the sketch again before you go into line art and this is just a little small motivation because line art used to be my least favorite process but i swear things will get better the more you do it so don't be discouraged and go like i don't want to do line art so i'm not gonna draw don't know you got this okay I got a lot, a lot of questions asking me how I color, but honestly, it's really hard to explain because I just see what looks nice and then I just go with it. One thing I suggest is playing with the saturation slash hue and color balance of your drawing and see what you think looks best. Another thing is that I tend to have a lot of colors as opposed to having a monochromatic color scheme. For example, I would add light blue, pink as the highlights as opposed to white. Why? Because I just think it looks nice, no particular reason. Another thing is just I pick colors that I really like. My favorite color scheme is pink, blue, yellow, purple together, like my OC, if you can tell already. So I tend to use that color palette a lot. And one more thing, for shadows, I tend to make it not only in one color, I try to make the shadows have both cool and warm tints to make it more stand out. I also talk about shading in my art tips video that I keep referencing that you should maybe go watch but basically defining your light source really really helps. Another thing I would like to talk about is cell shading versus soft shading. Cell shading is when there is a hard edge of the shadow while soft shading appears to have a softer look. Cell shading is mostly used for animation because it's easier and faster to do and this is just something to keep in mind obviously there is no right or wrong 
shading style and you can use both in your shading styles as well and that's it for this video obviously the tips you learned from this video or any of my other videos won't just miraculously change your art overnight really the main thing is to digest these tips apply them into your next drawing and see the improvement over time so you know what that means so see you all in the next video and good luck on your artist journey bye bye